In the time of history, the term Aryan emerges not as an ethnic label, but as a banner of civilization, nobility, and freedom. Its roots trace back to a migratory group from Central Asia, the Indo-Iranians, who etched their narrative on the Iranian plateau before their kin, the Indo-Aryans, ventured south to weave the tale of northern India. In its early chapters, Aryan bore no ethnic weight. The Persians, in their pre-Islamic era, embraced it as a distinction from their Arab conquerors in the 7th century, a marker not of race but of class and identity. Yet, the 19th century pen of Western European scholars inked a new chapter. They translated Sanskrit texts, often through the lens of misunderstanding, birthing a connection between Aryan and light-skinned superiority. The orchestrator of this symphony was Sir William Jones, whose claim of a common source, Proto-Indo-European, echoed through time. However, this melody swirled into darker tones in the hands of Joseph Arthur de Gobineau, who composed racist theories of Aryan blood and white supremacy. His notes would resonate in the works of Houston Stewart Chamberlain and the ideological symphonies of Alfred Rosenberg, eventually finding a home in Nazi Germany. Max Müller, a German philologist, wove a myth into this narrative with his Aryan invasion theory, suggesting fair-skinned Aryans conquered darker-skinned inhabitants in the Indus Valley, laying the foundations of high civilization. However, Müller's own intent contradicted this interpretation. As the 19th and 20th centuries unfolded, the British wielded this narrative to justify their rule in India, casting themselves as the superior Aryans bringing enlightenment to the less fortunate. Sir Mortimer Wheeler's excavations in the ancient Indus Valley cities further fueled this notion, linking it to Muller's invasion theory. Yet, the pages of history, in their modern scrutiny, have cast shadows on these tales. Wheeler's work and Muller's theory have been discredited. The once pervasive definition of Aryan as Caucasian has been dismissed as misguided, misinterpretative, or intentionally racist. In the present day, Aryan finds its true essence in the Indo-Iranian and Indo-Aryan migratory groups, possibly originating from the Ural River region, or, according to some scholars, solely within the Indo-Iranians, as embraced by the great Persian empires of the Near East. Long ago, in the expanse of modern-day Kazakhstan near the Ural River, a migratory band embarked on a journey that would echo through millennia. These wanderers, later known as the Indo-Iranians and Indo-Aryans, carved their saga as they made their gradual way toward the Iranian plateau, settling in before the 3rd millennium BCE. In those ancient days, their identity was not yet draped in the term Aryan. They carried no racial distinctions. Instead, they spoke of a class divide. The Avestan language, the conduit of the Zoroastrian scriptures, the Avesta, breathed life into the term Aryan. Here, it did not signify a race, but a class a designation for those who cherished freedom, nobility, and civilization. To be Aryan was to be one who heard, remembered, and lived by these worthy precepts, following the path of light over darkness. As the whispers of Zoroastrianism echoed through the ages, drawing inspiration from the early Iranian religion, the term Aryan retained its ancient resonance. Zoroaster, a beacon in the tapestry of history, led the way for those who adhered to the light, in the sacred texts of Hinduism and Buddhism, the term danced through the verses, devoid of ethnic or racial connotations. Jeffrey D. Long, an esteemed scholar, unravels the Hindu definition, painting Aryans as noble, cultured, the bearers of ancient Vedic wisdom, a stark contrast to the barbarians they labeled as mocha. This term, far from an ethnic marker, held the essence of culture and spirituality. Ramala Topper, an Indian historian, casts doubt on the ethnic interpretation of Arya, suggesting it never danced to the tunes of ethnicity. Even in Buddhism, Arya stood as a testament to nobility and superiority. John M. Collar, delving into the Buddhist teachings, finds the term woven into the fabric of the Four Noble Truths, supremely valuable, worthy of assent and respect. In two distinct cultures, a common thread bound them. The understanding that Aryan was not a label of division, but a celebration of cultural and spiritual values, etching its significance across the ages. The tale unfolds as the so-called Indo-Aryans, once nomads near the Ural River, set their sights on the sun-kissed lands of India. Their journey brought them to the cradle of an advanced civilization, the Indus Valley Civilization, also known as Harappan culture. This flourishing society, spanning from approximately 7000 to 600 BCE, boasted unparalleled advancements in agriculture, artistry, and urban planning. 
cities like Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, teeming with life around 2600 BCE, showcased marvels of urban design, rivaling even the grandeur of Rome. Running water, an intricate sewer system, and homes crafted to mute the cacophony of the outside world, such was the sophistication of these ancient metropolises. The Indus Valley inhabitants were architects of their destiny, fashioning wind catchers for air conditioning in their homes, an innovation Rome could only dream of. Their script, though undeciphered, bore witness to their intellectual prowess, accompanied by musical instruments, farming implements, and seaworthy vessels. The ports of the Indus welcomed the world, engaging in trade with Mesopotamia and Egypt. Yet, like all tales, theirs had a turning point. Between 1900 and 1500 BCE, the once thriving civilization began to fade. Cities stood abandoned, and a great migration swept the people toward the southern realms of the subcontinent. The genesis of Vedic thought coincided with this exodus, a period known as the Vedic era when the sacred Vedas found form in the elegant tapestry of Sanskrit. The language and concepts of the Vedas, foreign to the Indus Valley script, hinted at an infusion from elsewhere. A prevailing theory suggests that the Indo-Aryans, in waves across many years, merged with the indigenous people, blending cultures in a dance of adaptation. Yet, in the corridors of historical debate, the out-of-India theory whispers its descent, claiming Vedic thought sprouted in the Indus Valley, journeyed to Central Asia, and returned with a migratory wave. A theory clung to by nationalists but shunned by mainstream scholars. The migration of the Indus Valley inhabitants southward stands as an established truth, yet it was not a retreat from invaders but a ballet with climate change, drought, and a dwindling trade with Mesopotamia and Egypt. The cities, once vibrant, fell silent not to the drums of war but to the rhythms of resource exhaustion and perhaps overpopulation, a testament to the ebb and flow of ancient civilizations. As the pages of history turned, the ruins of Harappa emerged from the shadows, a testament to a civilization that had once thrived in silent grandeur. Charles Masson, an intrepid explorer, unraveled the enigma in 1829, laying bare the remnants of the Indus Valley civilization. Little did the world know that these ancient echoes would reverberate through the corridors of racial reinterpretation. In the crucible of burgeoning racial theories, the narrative of a colossal Aryan invasion gained momentum. Western scholars, draped in the cloak of systemic racism, posited a tale of destruction, surmising that the Aryans raised the cities and pushed survivors toward the southern expanse. This interpretation, stained by prejudice, reflected the broader tendency to attribute cultural achievements to supposedly light-skinned races, echoing claims that Egyptians were Caucasian and the Maya a distant colony of Egypt. The puppeteer behind the racial reinterpretation was Joseph Arthur de Gobineau, a Frenchman who wove a narrative of white supremacy in his 1855 work, An Essay on the Inequality of the Human Races. His ideas found kinship with the likes of Richard Wagner and Houston Stewart Chamberlain, forming the ideological bedrock for later horrors. Houston Stewart Chamberlain, mesmerized by Wagner's compositions, further entwined Aryan identity with ethnicity. He championed the notion that Caucasians birthed the world's great civilizations. This distorted view found its way into the Aryan invasion theory, albeit unintentionally by Max Muller, a scholar who, despite being associated with the theory, never believed in racial inequality. The dark shadows cast by Gobineau and Chamberlain found a sinister ally in Hitler and Alfred Rosenberg, fueling the Nazi party's rise and ultimately setting the stage for World War II and the Holocaust. Despite the discrediting of these theories after Germany's defeat in 1945, their lingering influence seeped into scholarly works, particularly through the acclaimed archaeologist Sir Mortimer Wheeler. In the 1960s, George F. Dales dismantled Wheeler's claims, revealing a lack of evidence for invasion and conquest in the excavated sites. The Aryan invasion theory, once taught as historical truth, crumbled under scrutiny. Yet, its remnants persisted, sustained by those with racial or nationalist agendas. The narrative, once dominated by visions of light-skinned conquerors subduing darker Dravidians, underwent a metamorphosis. A nuanced understanding emerged, revealing a pattern of migration and cultural blending between the Aryans and the people of the Indus Valley civilization. Key's insights illuminated a mutual exchange of cultural wealth, challenging the divisive narratives of the past. In the present day, the Aryan invasion theory stands discredited, echoing in the chambers of historical misjudgments. Yet, 
the term Aryan lingers, shackled to the shadows of misguided notions. The hope remains that, with time, Aryan will rediscover its original essence, a symbol of nobility, recognizing the worth of all humanity. The definition may expand, embracing universal values that transcend skin color, class or cultural affiliations, an affirmation of inherent human dignity and rights for all. The journey to reclaim the true identity of Aryan continues, an odyssey from shadows to enlightenment.